welcome to the Post Sunday app. We're glad you've joined us for this video where we talk about the sermon Post Sunday and yeah, how apply to apply it. Yeah. See if you need yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> great. Great. I do kind of tune out the first part of the. Yeah, I get that a lot. Yeah, I get that wait, a lot. So. Wait, wait for the question. <laughs> yes. Yes. So, Second uh, Samuel. And, and before we go 12. on, can I kind of plug my new mug? Oh, if you'd like. The Covenant Community Church. Yeah. This is the first bling I've gotten <laughs> bling. <laughs> from the from the church plant. So I'm pretty excited. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, do, do you remember like the first mugs we got and? You remember the t-shirts? Yes. Yes. We had a, a we had a green water bottle. Yeah. I remember right. A little okay. straw. Yeah. A little plastic green yeah. water bottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the first things we gave out. This is way nicer. Yeah, what were you it's thinking? It's got its own it's got its own little uh coaster. So look at that. I can just leave it right there. It's a good plug. So <laughs> No, I'm excited about it. so November the twelfth is the launch date and the yeah. 29th. We'll do a commissioning service. Yeah. That's right. Things I wanted to say yesterday. Is yes. That's one of them. I, I, you know, I was so trying to get through things because uh, we yeah. had a wonderful Sunday yesterday. Yes. Um, but I was, okay, I got need to move this thing along because I didn't do any announcements before yeah. or uh, family notes yeah. before the, the right. sermon. But right. one of the things I wanted to mention is on the 29th we're going to do that, um, the commissioning mm-hmm. as as a church to to want to, to for, launch to covenant launch community. Yeah, be a bittersweet time. Oh. Yeah. Very joyful time, but a very, very sad. Yeah. These folks. Yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah, it was, it was a wonderful Sunday. Uh, four people follow the Lord in baptism. Uh, you got up there later than you typically yeah. do. Yeah. You know, so I'm guessing there's some things you had to cut. Yeah. You, I was going to mention the 29th, uh, 22nd. Uh, we'll be back studying, cha- starting to study Lord willing, chapters 13 through 20. So I think I worked that in mm-hmm. the message, but be, yeah. be reading that ahead on that. On the on the night of the twenty second, we're gonna we're gonna um, have our uh, continue our series on the the Gen X church. You know, so okay. major church movements over the last fifty years. We talked about the attractional church last time. We're gonna talk about the dispensational church this time okay. and how the um, dispensational movement has really affected the church over the last fifty years. Some strengths and weaknesses of that. So okay. it should be should yeah. be a fun conversation. That's the Sunday night service on October twenty second. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thanks. Very good. Very good. Well, getting to um, yesterday's sermon from Second Samuel twelve, yeah, um, I wrote down the big idea as confronting sin helps believers receive God's gracious discipline and restoration. Yeah, that sound familiar? Yeah, okay, good. good. Can I can I ask you a question? Can I ask, start with a question? Sure. Did you did you do your homework assignment? Did I do my homework? I don't think of I asking did. someone to. No. Can I publicly I mean, confront you? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just. That's not a bit. See, the answer is not no. It's just not yet. Yeah, I. Yeah. You're now ask me. Yeah. Did you do your? I did not. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Okay. <laughs> this okay. morning I was like, oh, I never. You know, I, I told everyone to do that, and I haven't done it yet. Yeah. Well, so we'll get to it. Yeah. We'll we'll hold each other accountable. Yeah, we will. To do so. Yeah. But I thought, you know, when you got up. That's there, right. And the question was, uh, the the, question, the assignment was to ask someone. Am I an easy person to, or is it hard to confront me? In my mm-hmm. sin? Okay, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. You thought when I got up there. I thought when you got up there, because you're getting up there a little later than, than yeah. sometimes you do, that maybe you would just park on letter A, oh. confrontation. Because those seven sub points, wow, those those are, that's a sermon. I know. Those are seven sermons. I know. I oh, looked at the notes coming in, I'm like, so. I, I said all that. I said, <laughs> I was going to say all that. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, you could have parked right there. Yeah. Did that ever come to your mind, like, like oh maybe in light of the morning like oh maybe I could do the you know part A and part B of this sermon. Yeah, well, it does now. Uh, <laughs> that'd be brilliant. No, I should I, I have texted you while you're yeah, there, like hey. I did have that here. thought at some point. Yeah. Um, but um, I I I think I I think I made the decision. I can't, I can't remember. Where I, I was like we we need to get through Second Samuel and uh, okay. Yeah. And that's a bad saying out loud sounds bad, but there's you know <laughs> yeah. I want to get into we're you know Lord willing we're going to study Philippians next I want to get to that and yeah. um, it's it's designed to be an overview of of Second Samuel and so yeah it's designed to help people go deeper you know in care groups and studies and sure. stuff too so sure. okay uh, I'm I'm 46 and I've got to get through the whole counsel of God if, if the mm. Lord allows so I've got some got some work to do yeah, and I don't want to rush I don't but right. you know. 
Right. Okay. Well, we did. You did get some questions. Yeah. After yesterday's we sermon. Did. Yeah. Some um, here is one of them. Maybe you could remind us the circumstances and what attitude we should have if we are to confront someone. And there are some some sub questions here too. Yeah. Can we read those? Too? Yeah. Help me get okay. the context. Uh, should we only confront someone that we are pretty sure they are a believer? Mm. I believe the world, including the church, is misunderstanding if it is ever appropriate to confront someone. Yeah, I think it changes the context. So the way in which I'm going to confront you as a believer is different mm. than the way I'm going to confront an unbeliever. So I, I think there is a responsibility. You know, if, if an, maybe your employer is doing something that's unethical, and I, I need to. As just an instrument of righteousness, I need to say, hey, this isn't a right way to do it. I'm not mm. going to participate in that. But my expectations are different from an unbeliever that, that versus a believer. Mm. And uh, I don't expect a, an unbeliever to confess the sin the same way a believer would. Mm. Or, you know, so, yeah. so I think the, the, so for sure, the main emphasis of yesterday's message was here's, here's how we confront a believer. Mm-hmm. And I did have some more thoughts on what type of confrontation versus depending upon what type of relationship Mm. so you and I there's really nothing that I hope that you see in my life that you wouldn't feel comfortable with okay I need to talk to Daniel about that because we're close enough we've worked together Uh, we've been working together for you know over 15 15, years you know so we you know there's there's a need you know like Mm. if if no if you're not going to feel comfortable talking to me about it no one Mm. else is yeah most likely so that's um there's a high level of responsibility there. A believer in another church, much lower mm. level of responsibility. Yeah. And if, if our, our circles kind of cross and I'm aware of some things, maybe their church isn't, maybe my responsibility becomes greater, but yeah, that's mm-hmm. kind of how I'd approach it. What would you say? Yeah. Well, I, the question to you of what, what attitude we should have. Hmm. Humility. Yeah. You know, right? a spirit of, yeah, humility, but also a spirit of gentleness. Mm-hmm. And the idea there is restoration. Mm-hmm. And so my whole goal is I, I just love this person. I want to see them restored to the fullness of relationship yeah. with God. Yeah, because we recognize that we could be seeing things wrong too. Yeah, you know, to sort of say, yeah. "Hey, I could be wrong on this. I could be seeing this wrong, but yeah. here, here's what I believe I'm seeing." Right. And then your three words, "Help me understand." Yeah, help me understand. You know? So yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, another question here: Consequences are different for believers versus unbelievers. To be clear, if you're not in Christ, suffering is purposed differently. Right. Question mark. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, which means there is condemnation for those who are outside of Christ Jesus. Mm. Um, and so that doesn't mean that every bad thing that ha- that happens to an unbeliever is you know a sign of God's displeasure with them. But it's just like you know the when the Tower of Siloam falls and Jesus says you know do you, do you think that they were less righteous than than other people no but unless you re- repent you unless you repent we you all likewise perish mm. and so just the idea that all of us have the responsibility when we encounter the consequence of living in a fallen world to say oh there's a there's a coming condemnation for everyone mm. and so we need to to turn from that so yeah i'd be careful about saying even for an unbeliever you're sick because you're mm. a sinner yeah. You, know, you look at the the man born blind, and even before he's a, a believer, Jesus says, "Look, it's not because of his sin or his parents' sin that he's born blind, but so that God mm-hmm. might be glorified." So, yeah. Yeah. so to answer the question, yes, consequences of sin are different ultimately for an unbeliever, but even still, with an unbeliever, I would I would just be careful about making direct connections, yeah. um, and, and just encouraging them to repent as they see hard things yeah. in their life. And I'm sure that just washed over our gathered church because uh, I think that's an error that we often think is mm. I'm I'm getting this issue in my life because I sinned in mm-hmm. my past or just that condemnation we can tend to carry yeah. with us and yeah, yeah. there yeah. is therefore none yeah and I think the idea yeah we are experiencing constantly the consequences of our sin and other people's sin but for a believer and, and I think that's what the question gets at well yeah. for, for a believer those consequences are designed for sanctification not yeah. condemnation yeah that's super encouraging yeah right? it's like, encouraging for me. i can grow closer yeah. to christ and what a joy that is yeah and, it's hard but it's a joy right and, and if you're in a marriage relationship that began in bad circumstances or uh, has had sin in the past you know i think people can sometimes be 
discouraged, like, okay, I need to make the best of a bad situation here, as opposed to mm-hmm. saying, hey, this is God's good plan for me right now. Mm-hmm. And I can experience the fullness of God's blessing in this moment. Yeah. It's good in this marriage. And, and, you know, Whitney and I often talk, you know, we, we got married very young. We started dating very young. And you think about all the the stupidity of, of youth, and I don't mean that as a um, you know, disparaging comment on people who are young, because there's stupidity of old age too. Yeah, in middle age, <laughs> sure. But there's there's certain uh, there's certain, uh, certain struggles, and struggles and blind spots yeah. in a youth, and sure. Whitney and I had all those, and uh, at least some of those, and just I mean, how kind is God hmm. to have worked through those and allowed us to to get married and, and be in a relationship? Uh, yeah. And, and, beautiful kids and yeah that's great yeah so great okay well you're you'll be out of the the pulpit yeah a couple weeks here yeah two weeks so. then we'll come back on the 22nd lord willing yeah, and who is filling the pulpit in those two weeks so blake is this sunday and jordan is the sunday after that okay so, great look yeah, forward to hearing from those guys some great uh jordan's last time in the pulpit before we launch yeah community uh covenant community church <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, Daniel. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, too, for tuning in the Post Sunday app. Have a great rest of your day.